All right, so good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I really, really do appreciate it. Is there anyone here tonight that has never been to a hit and run candlesticks or right way option class? If if so, just you know, type a Y or something like that. Speak up. We'd like to make sure and welcome you here. Um, <laughs> TVO, yeah. Oh, well, welcome, TVO. I'm gonna call you TVO tonight. <laughs> welcome from Canada. Outstanding. Anyone else here from? that hasn't been to one of our classes before. Hey, Cynthia, how you doing? Glad to have you here tonight. Really do appreciate it. Tonight's gonna be just a little bit different than some of the classes I do that are, are more formalized. I wanted to talk tonight about having a more planned approach to trading. I get lots and lots of questions on this, and there's been quite a lot of questions here recently um, in the trading room, and I've, I've seen it from both hit and run candlesticks and right way options, and I thought I would just take some time. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I do. Is this the only way to do things? Of course not. Um, not the only way to do things. But it's, it's what I do, and maybe I can share with you some of the rationale of why I do what I do and how that has been successful for me in creating this career of trading full time for a living and being able to, to pull that off for so, for so long. Um, it really comes down to um, anyone here from from right way options or hit and run candlesticks that that knows me would probably agree. To type a Y if you agree. I am pretty strict on the rules that I trade. In fact, I'm pretty darn dedicated to the rules that I trade and stay disciplined to the rules that I have created. Um, over the years of trading. And there's some reasoning for that. And I wanna share some of that with you and see if it makes some sense to you and see if this will help with some of those questions I hear about um, setting stops and, and taking profits and those kind of things in trades. So I'm gonna do this in just a little bit different way. You know, when we, when we talk about trading, isn't it true that one of the things that we want to do as traders is we just want this to hurry up and start making us money? Okay? We just want it to just hurry up and start making money. Don't bother me with the details, right? Just show me that sexy indicator, that sexy scan, that sexy something that promises me gold at the end of today uh, because I don't want to wait past the end of today. I want to be successful right now. And one of the things that I learned over time, and, and believe me, I was one of the most stubborn people you could um, ever imagine being around, was to develop the patience to actually put together a plan to make money. Now, would you guys agree that if you take a look at the market and take a look at all the different strategies, as a matter of fact, many of the strategies that you may have traded um, over the years, okay? You may have a particular strategy that you've tried, but it just didn't work out like you hoped it would. And in, in those strategies, you find out that, um, well, you're disappointed, right? You you try this strategy, you go to this webinar, and boy, this is this is the hot thing. And they show you, they cherry pick a few charts and show you, man, you're really missing out if you don't do this. And then you trade this for a little while, and well, that didn't work. And so you go over here and you try this next strategy, and that really doesn't work and then you spend months and months and months trying to work on the perfect scan or the perfect set of indicators and you find out that doesn't work anybody been in that situation in, and as a matter of fact anybody want to admit that you've spent years 
in that situation. I'm telling you guys, I, I did too. I did too. And <clears throat> what I finally realized is if you, you can take any strategy and as long as you can show me an expectancy rate that's better than 50-50, okay? If I can take trades and I can win at least 50% of these trades, does anyone in here believe that you can actually make money? You can be successful in trading only winning half of your trades? Yeah, you absolutely can. As a matter of fact, um, a 50-50 trader with the right um, discipline in how you trade can make a, a trading strategy like that work. But let's be honest, guys. How many of us have ever taken the time to go back through our trades and look at the, the details of our trades? and try to figure out the discipline that's actually going to take us from losing money to making money. Anybody want to admit that you really haven't gone back and look at that? That you really haven't taken a look at the things that are creating the problems. Now, I do an awful lot of individual coaching and I can tell you there are two major problems that I deal with and a lot of folks that I work with a lot of folks that I work with um, tell me, you know, when we first start out, that they are pretty much a 50-50 trader. They win about half of their trades and they lose about half of their trades. But they're not making money based on two things or two major criteria here. First, they have to be losing too much on their losing trades. So the first step that I wanted to talk about tonight is setting stop losses. And I've heard lots of discussions and, and lots of different ways on setting stop losses. Uh, that's awesome, keeping a log and then evaluating those trades, Cynthia. Incredibly useful to your trading career. I mean, incredibly useful. It, it literally was the difference of me identifying and it, all the problems I had in my trading, guys, didn't have anything to do with the market. They were all my problems. They were all my fault. Okay? If I didn't record those trades and if I didn't find out what was causing me these problems, there's no way I could have fixed them. Okay? What I had to do is I had to take more of a business approach, approach to my trading. Okay, and in every business, we have a plan. There's a business plan. There's a process that you follow. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it really is, isn't it, Brian? Yeah. It really is a game changer. So let's talk about first one of the things that people ask questions about all the time and that's setting stops I hear <clears throat> I hear lots of people with lots of different theories on setting stop losses um, from the extreme on one side well I don't use stop losses those are stupid anybody heard from people like that I don't use stop losses that's stupid you're just gonna get yourself stopped out to the people that say well I you know I can't lose very much money, and so I set my stops incredibly tight, okay? And literally what's happening is they are, I call it death from a thousand paper cuts. They never lose much money. Yeah, little teeny tiny stop losses. They never lose much money, but they never win. It's just a slow, steady bleed. Just little tiny irritating paper cuts that keep bleeding out their account. Okay. And so first off, what I want to do is discuss the use of stops. Now, 
a lot of people, they want the easy answer, right? Don't we all? We just want the easy answer. And I think the easy answer in stop losses is just saying, okay, it is a certain percentage. A certain percentage is easy, right? Just tell me what the percentage is. If I can lose 5% on a trade, I can figure that out. Okay, there's my, there's my stop loss. But let's talk about that for a second. If you use a percentage for a stop loss, okay, does that really equate, or do, do most people take that percentage and equate it directly to what that dollar amount is? And isn't that percentage going to be different? That dollar amount that you actually lose in a trade, isn't it going to be different based on the size of the stock? I mean, wouldn't it be way different to have a, take a 5% loss on Coca-Cola than it is to take a 5% loss on Amazon? It's a massive difference, right? So the percentage thing never really made any sense to me because I couldn't standardize it. I couldn't, I couldn't put it in a framework, into a box. Now, some people still like to use that. They, they just, they fly with this percentage. But I think oftentimes, because they fly with that percentage, it actually stresses them out in, your tra in their trading. Think about it, if you don't know how many dollars, actual dollars you have at risk on a trade, are you going to be more emotional about that position or less emotional about that position? <clears throat> okay. Oh, without a doubt, Frank. It's a lot different in the sense that open outcry trading, you know, you would send in your stop loss, the broker would hand it to the person on the floor, the person would look at that, stick it in their pocket, trade against it for five minutes, and then trigger you out of the trade. It's different. It's very, very different. Okay? But what doesn't change, what's never changed, is our tolerance to risk. Okay, our tolerance to risk is what's important here. See, if, if I don't know the tolerance, the, how many dollars I'm willing to lose in a trade, if I don't know that number, if I'm just arbitrarily assigning a percentage to it, I'm always going to be out of control. At least for me, I'm always going to be out of control because I really don't know how much I've risked on that trade. Does that make sense to you guys? See, if your bills are like mine, when the bill comes, there's no percentage of what I have to pay. This, there's an absolute amount that I have to pay. If I'm going to have some kind of a business plan, imagine you going into a bank and trying to borrow money and saying, well, our stop loss is gonna be this percent number, and they say, okay, well, how much is that? Well, it's that percent number. No, um, okay, how much does that percent number equate to? Well, it'll be different depending on what we trade, what we do. It, every time we make a business transaction, it'll be different. How many banks are gonna loan you money with that kind of wishy-washiness in trading? Or in anything, in business? They're not gonna do it. Right? But isn't it interesting, we go into trading with this idea that we can just arbitrarily assign a percentage to a stop loss and then just swing that bat and hopefully it's not a big loss in a trade. So for me, one of the first things I want to do, a Rex, you know, folks overcomplicate the option side of things tremendously and I'll talk about that here in just a second, okay? <clears throat> it doesn't have to be as complicated. Now, it's going to be pretty much impossible to give you a perfect exact number because even the 
market makers don't know what the perfect exact number of a price of an option is going to be at a specific level in the stock price because it's a moving target. Every, all of the matrix, I mean, all of the uh, calculations to figure that are a moving target. They're moving constantly. So there's no way to perfectly know, but you can get very, very close in that, okay? So let's take a look. If we had a stock price, if we had a stock that was um, moving up in a trend, pulls back, finds price support and buyers step in and we look at the price action in this trade and we identify that buyers step in about here that's where our support is in the chart do we not have a price associated with that we know what that dollar amount is right and if we're doing our proper job not just guessing and not just hoping and not just anything else we have a dollar amount that we can assign to that. And if we look at a potential trade, let me just change a little drawing color here. If we look at a potential trade and that buy signal pops up here that we see and we decide that's our trade and we take our entry on that trade right in here, there's also a dollar sign associated with that, right? So our job as traders is to figure out how much we can risk on a trade and not take trades that put us outside of our risk tolerance. Okay, now if I trade an option, and this is for Rex, I do it exactly the same way. I buy an option and I place a stop loss based on the price of the chart itself. Remember, the option is directly tied to the underlying equity. If the support of that price action is here, my stop loss needs to be there. Because isn't it true if this were to fail, if this were to go down here, do we want this trade any longer? No, if we're honest with ourselves, this is, this is not what we expected in the move. So we want this trade gone as quickly as we can. We don't have, want to make a decision on it. We don't, because our decision should have been made before we entered the trade. That this had an acceptable risk tolerance for the trade. It was okay, we accepted that risk. We know going into this business, in this trading, we're not going to win every trade, right? <clears throat> so we need to know we have a trading strategy that has a expectancy rate of more wins than losses. There's no guarantee every time we make a trade if this is the one that's going to turn against us. Okay? <clears throat> we can't resolve that problem because of the uncertainty, the volatility, the different things, the changes that occur in the market. What we can control is something simple, how much we risk on the trade. Okay, now everyone in here, whether they know it or not, has a tolerance for risk. And we have to, as traders, figure out what our tolerance for risk is. And it changes all the time, right? If our count's growing, our tolerance for risk probably grows a little bit. If our count is shrinking, our tolerance for risk should necessarily pull back, right? Because we've got less money to work with. Our capital base is diminished. We need to reconsider what our tolerance for risk is based on our account size. Okay. So how many of you guys know what your tolerance for risk is? Actually know what your tolerance for risk is. <clears throat> how much you can lose on a trade and how many trades you could lose all at once. If the market were to just absolutely flip on you, because we can't control that, right? We've seen that over the last few months. Things going well, overnight the light switch flips. Every trade that you're in, if you're all in one direction, stops out, boom. 
how many trades can stop out all at once and be an acceptable tolerance of risk. That's awesome, Newton. That's awesome. But we have to figure that out as traders. We need to know what that number is. Then, the next step here, guys, once we know what that number is, then we have to figure out how to develop the discipline to follow that rule. How many in here give lip service to the idea that I know where my stock, I, I have a risk tolerance, I know what it is, but actually have trades on right now where the loss is much larger than your risk tolerance? I did that forever, okay, for a long, long time. Oh, I can lose $200 on a trade and then have trades that I'm down 1500 bucks in. Why haven't you sold that one? Well, it's going to come back. I'm pretty sure it's going to come back. It's got to come back, right? Please, come on, please come back, right? We convince ourselves that we know something more. See, we try to say we have a rule, but then we don't follow it. Let me ask you this, guys. If you put together a, the perfect plan, the perfect plan to get you the goal that you want to reach every month, but you don't follow the rules to get that happen, to, to make that occur, what's the chances of you ever hitting that goal? Yeah, zero, right? Zero. Yeah, that's right, MB. So for the option trade, for Rex that was asking that question, we need to set a conditional stop that says, if the stock fails through a support level, sell this option immediately close the trade okay and we can calculate pretty close just by using our Delta to tell us approximately how much we have at risk in this trade now you can use a black shells calculator like they use on thinkorswim or anything to get a real close estimate but it's never going to be perfect because all of those numbers are moving targets so I just set a conditional order based on the price action of the chart and say, boom, there's my stop. I calculate from my entry to my exit and I make the decision. Not only does it fit my risk tolerance, but I acknowledge and accept that risk tolerance. And I think that's a real important step. See, if I don't acknowledge that I'm willing to lose that money how many of you have ever been in a trade? The trade looks great. The next day, the trade turns against you and you panic. Your whole plan just goes out the door, right? You panic, you close that trade, take the loss. The next day, the stock is up. Anybody ever done that? See, what we have to do is when we create our plan, we have to acknowledge and say, okay, I accept that risk. I accept that risk and I'm staying with my plan. And what I usually say that I stay with my plan unless there's some fundamental change in the market that makes my plan pretty much null and void, okay? something completely shifted everything kind of went off the rails if that occurs then closing that trade is probably the wisest thing to do but unless that occurs you need to stick with your plan okay you need to stick with it because if we don't accept and acknowledge that risk we're never going to be able to stay in a trade with the volatility that we see in the market from time to time like we see now. We won't be able to, to stick with our rules, right? It's the discipline. 
If you ask folks in Right Way Options, and some, some of the folks in Hit Run Candlesticks, they will tell you that I am so disciplined to, to my rules, it, it's kind of pathetic. Okay, I do this because my rule says to, I don't do this because my rule says not to. I don't have to think about it anymore. Okay. Um, it can help you plan for stocks and ETFs. It cannot help you. Um, it's not set up or designed to help you plan option trades. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I want you to, guys to think about this. Now, one of the rules that I like to get people started on and, and I can give you some examples of how this works, okay? But what I want people to consider is when they take risk in a trade, they never take more risk than somewhere between about three or 4% of their account size into any one trade. That's not how much you lose, that's how much you risk, okay? That's a rule that I have followed for years and years and years, better than 20 years, guys. Three to 4% is what I risk on my trades. I don't risk more than that. I don't, I'm not here to gamble, okay? If you wanna gamble, go to Vegas. They'll comp you for a room when you lose your money and make sure you have something to eat at least for a day. And they'll be happy to bring you drinks as long as you continue to lose money. This is business. Okay? And in business, we have to have a better plan. Okay? So the rules that I use, my, my trade size stays 3 to 4%. Okay? I don't really go outside of that. I have to be extremely confident in the market condition to go outside of that. Okay? Um, Ken, uh, no I don't. My percentage, again, I don't use a percentage for my stop loss. I use a percentage of my account for my account size. Okay, if you have a $30,000 account, guys, $30,000 account, and you use three to 4%, you're gonna be somewhere between $900 for the, your trade size to 1000 to $1,200. That's gonna be your trade size. Anything beyond that is unacceptable. Okay. See, one of the problems we have as traders is we don't even know when we're over trading. Think about this, guys. If you're trading options, is it pretty easy to lose 20% on a trade? If you're trading options, can you easily lose 20% on a trade? Oh yeah, okay, good. So if I trade a $1,000 trade, if I take an average of this and take a $1,000 trade, $1,000 size, 20%, I'm gonna lose $200 on that trade, right? If I take five trades, if I'm comfortable holding five trades at a time, what I'm essentially saying is on that really bad day, I could lose a thousand bucks and I'd still be okay. Is that okay? See that thousand bucks is how what a, what percent of my overall account? Three percent. Okay. I know if I were if I had a thirty thousand dollar account and I have that one bad day that occurs, and I lose a thousand dollars. If I follow my plan because I have a high expectancy rate in my plan. I can recover that. 
But I can tell you this, if I risk more than 5% of my account, I get really uncomfortable. I start getting emotional about trading. I can also tell you this, if you're unwilling to risk more than about 2% of your account on that one really bad day that shouldn't happen that often, you're gonna struggle ever making money because your risk tolerance is far too low. You can't take enough trades. You'll never be able to have a good quality trading plan because there's just not enough capital at risk. You can't win enough to make it work if it's too low. Okay, that's right. You got nothing, you can't, you, you won't, it's almost impossible to recover. Let me share with you something I see with folks that have extremely low risk tolerance and see if this, just type a Y if this talks to you a little bit. You put on one or two trades at a time, maybe three if you're feeling really, really, you know, really funky that day. And the only thing you can do the entire time those trades are open is stare at those charts and watch those numbers tick back and forth on your brokerage screen. Can't do anything else. You are absolutely completely consumed by watching those little things wiggle around. That's someone with a risk, that's someone with a problem of too low of risk tolerance. They're trading beyond their ability to handle it. Yeah, exactly. Chain smoking, chewing your nails. See, guys, if you're doing that, you're you're being completely unproductive in your training. Um, every, everyone from Right Way Options will tell you that I rarely look at my positions throughout the day. Why? Because I have a plan and I follow my plan. If my plan is in place, my stop hasn't been triggered, I'm still in my plan. I got nothing to worry about. Just follow the trade. Because I've accepted my tolerance to risk I've accepted that and acknowledged it and said, if that happens, it's okay. I can recover for it. I won't like it. Don't get me wrong. I don't like losing money. But my job from that point on is to find the next trade, not to sit there and watch those numbers tick back and forth and that candle wiggle around. Because all that does is create anxiety and really poor decision making in your trading. Anyone agree that it's had that problem? It's just, it's, it's completely consuming. You can't do anything else. That's a person, okay, that does not have a plan or trust their plan. They've not acknowledged their risk. They've really not come to terms. This is what I'm willing to risk. No, do not plan, set, and forget. Plan, set, and manage. Manage doesn't mean manage that every second of the day. It means manage the plan. manage yourself, right? Isn't that true? The bigger part of what we have to do as traders is manage ourselves. If every morning before the market opens, we've evaluated every single trade that we're in, we've adjusted our stop loss, set our targets, and we step away, 
do we need to be watching that incessantly all day long? No. As a matter of fact, what we're doing is we're wasting our time if we're doing that, right? Our next job is to find the next trade. We're being inefficient if that's all we do. Okay? And that's why this stuff is so important, guys. We have to know what our tolerance to risk is and we have to learn to accept it and acknowledge it and say, hey, if this occurs, it occurs. That's not what we want to have happen. Remember, a stop loss is there to protect us against something bad happening. So we have to accept and acknowledge it. And then move on. Okay. Uh, Cynthia, um, generally, I um, have all of my trades reviewed, stop losses set, target orders in place. Okay. That this you know whether I'm where I'm trying to take profits um, if it's a short term trade anyway, and um, that's all done before the market opens. And then the market opens, and I usually take a quick look. Where are things? Are they still lining up in my plan? From then on, I might take a look at them around noon. That's when right way options gets over noon my time. Right way options gets over about noon. I'll take a look at it there. And then I'm on it the next morning before the market opens. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing you can really do about gaps except learn to take profits. Okay. So that's the second part of this. Finding out what your risk tolerance is and putting in place a plan and a discipline. Okay. Well, Bill, that's going to be different for every trader. Like I said, if you have a $30,000 account and you use my rules, and I'm not saying you have to, but risking 3% to 4% of my account, that's somewhere between $900 and $1,200. So if I say average $1,000 on a trade, now you have to come up with how much can you risk of that $1,000 to your stop loss and then determine how many trades that you can actually handle if they were all to stop out at once. It's going to be different for every trader. And the more you build confidence in your trading, it'll change. Okay, it'll change. As your confidence grows, I just stick with the trades and I let those trades work. Your confidence changes and so does your tolerance to risk. Well, you know what? I think I can handle six trades now. I'm okay with that. So everyone's tolerance to risk is different. Okay? And you have to come up with that number that says, this is where I am. See, we need to start with that framework. One of the problems that I talk about all the time in trading is traders often don't know where they are and they don't know where they're going. They know where they want to be. They want to be rich. Okay? But that's not a plan. It's a fantasy. But it's not a plan. We need to know how we're going to go from where we, our starting point. Let's use the beginning of the, of the year or beginning of the month. We start our month here. We want to be here at the end of the month. What are the steps to get us there? How are we going to do that? It doesn't happen by accident. 
You know, I, I take this back to my career in building houses. I built houses for more than 20 years, guys. And when you get a set of plans for a house, let's say it's a 5,000 square foot house. You get a set of plans for a house. If you try to think about all the details that have to be completed by the time that thing's finished, you're going to go insane. There's too many steps, too many details. The only thing you can do is say, okay, this is where I am right now. The end of this week, I need to be here. And you start setting those plans to get there. It's the only way a house gets built. It's the only way anything in the country gets built. One step at a time. That old saying, how do you need to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right? We have to take our trading to that kind of level that says, hey, this is what I do. This is my plan. Now, I know there's smart folks in here already saying, okay, this guy's out of his freaking mind telling me that only trade this size because I can't make any money doing that. Well, I'm going to tell you that's wrong. A neighbor, a friend of mine in the room started with a $20,000 account. I limited him to $600 to $800 for his trades. He followed a discipline in his trading, and in his first year, he made a 65% return. Now, did that happen by accident? Is he the smartest guy in the world? No, he's the average guy just like you and me. He followed a plan and it worked. Okay? He knew what his tolerance for risk was. He knew how many trades he could hold. He knew what he was supposed to do and he followed the plan. See, let me ask you guys, how many in here right now would it make a huge, huge difference if you made $1,000 a month consistently? Would that make a huge difference in your trading? Now, everybody's going to have a different number. But how are we going to get that $1,000? It's all great to say, I have a goal to make $1,000 this month. But what does that really mean? Does that mean you are willing to take, try and find 10 trades to make 100 bucks on them on each trade? To do it is that what you're willing to do can you look for 10 trades over the course of month that equal 100 dollars in potential profit and do it and take the profits because let me tell you the guy that i was just telling you about that made a 65 percent return His average winning trade for the course of the entire year was 120 bucks. And he grew his $20,000 account by 65% because he kept taking profits. So what's your plan? How are you going to do that? How are you going to make that goal happen? It doesn't just happen. It was an options B12, yes. If that's what your question was. He did it with options.
Would everyone agree January of this last year was just a crummy, crummy month? I mean, that's when the market just cavitated and fell like crazy. It was an ugly month, right? The guy I just talked about made six grand that month, a little over six grand. Made six grand. Averaged about $130 a trade. What's your plan? How are you going to reach your goals if you don't know? All right. Now let's talk about this idea of profit. Okay. If we have a specific goal, if we know what we want to do, and I usually tell people to create that goal, put that vision in your mind. What are you trying to do? So if you say, gosh, you know, if I could make, you know, a 20% return this year, I would just be, I've got bragging rights with all of my friends. That's better than most, all money managers out there in the market. Okay, if I could make 20% this year, okay, take your account size times 20%. What does that equal? If that comes up to $1,000, Per month, you know, we got $12,000, $1,000 a month. How much is that per week that we need to make? We need to make $250 a week, right? So how are we going to go about doing that? Let me ask you this question. If you know what target you're shooting for every month and every week, do we have to be chasing around every stock popping in the market to achieve this? If $1,000 is gonna make it for us, 12,000 a year is gonna make it for us, do we really need to be chasing around every stock out there, chasing everything that's popping in the market, trying to follow every single piece of news out there, chasing our tails all the time to make $250? No, we sure don't. As a matter of fact, if we slow way down and just pick out some good trending stocks and wait for the next entry in those trades, making that 250 really shouldn't be all that hard. But what do we do all day long? All day long, we're racing around, chasing, 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 chasing. Okay. Yes, volatility is extremely important, Robbie, to pay attention to. I talk about this a lot in Right Way Options. Volatility is extremely important to follow. If we're following around stocks that are always in the news and they're hopping and popping and we're trying to trade the earnings reports, all we can expect is tons and tons of whip in that trade. I've had people had winning trades at night when they closed their position and in the morning, just simply because the market makers spread out the bid-ask spread, they had their stops so tight they got stopped out at a loss right at the market open because they didn't recognize the volatility of the trade. Everybody in right-way options will tell you, I do everything possible to avoid high volatility stocks. I want the boring stock, the stock that's almost never in the news. I want deliberate price action. If that stock is full of wicks and tails, if it's in the news all the time, I usually don't have any interest in it whatsoever. Okay. And it's particularly dangerous right now with the, with the VIX. Our VIX is setting above 20. Okay. Um, Brian is correct. If you set your stop loss based on 
the price of the chart itself, the underlying stock, you'll also avoid that bid ask whip. Not based on the option, based on the price action in the chart. Okay? That's really, really important. We were looking at a stock today, um, Visa. I think it was Visa. Whoa, I'm getting no data. TC2000 down. There we go. Okay. So Visa, somebody asked me about this being a trade today. And re remember, when they were asking me, this was that nice tall candle. It was standing up here. Okay. So we had that nice tall candle, and I said, well, okay, here's what I would say to that. This stock has been range-bound. What's changed about that being range-bound in here? Has anything changed? You're not seeing a chart, guys. Um, click the refresh button over there by, um, it's, it's the second icon from the left, the two arrows, refresh your screen. Okay, so I said, okay, well, here's what I would ask you in this trade. First off, the price action of the chart says the stop loss would have to be down here. So if the price of the stock at that point in time was up here, the question has to be asked, is this an acceptable risk for you? Whoa. My screen went off and came back on. Anybody have screen? Hey guys, anybody there? My screen went off and then it came back on. I don't know what happened there. We had a blink. Okay, good. What I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by the internet, because it was brilliant, <laughs> is that if this person wanted to take this trade, here was the answer that I was going to give them. They wanted me to tell them this was a good trade. I said, well, let's talk about that. If your stop loss is here and you're entering the trade up here, is this an acceptable risk? Can you set a plan and stay in that trade? Okay, if the answer to that is yes, now let's go one step further. Yes, I can accept the risk. Okay, let's take a look at where possible resistance in the chart is. So let me ask this question again. If I enter this trade up here and my stop loss is down here and the possible upside resistance is right there, is this a risk trade that you wanna take? Does that fit a plan that you have in your trading? See, here's the thing. It's easy to look at this trade right here, zoom this up and do the hard right edge trade all the time and say, that's gotta be a good trade. There's a bullish candle. Okay, now let's consider one more thing, and it's the thing that I brought up at the end of the conversation and going through that, okay? If this trade sets up for you, now ask yourself one question. Diamonds has been up straight eight straight days in a row. Spy has been up seven straight days in a row. What's the odds of a pullback in the market? Pretty high, right? That's what I said when this candle was up here. Anybody in right way options confirm that today? I said, who thinks that the odds of a pullback in the market are pretty high?
So are you basing your trading on just chasing around a candle or are you actually basing it on what the market is doing? See, what I find most of the time is everyone is chasing a candle. They haven't even really evaluated the overall market condition. They haven't made that decision. What is a good trade for me today? How should I approach the market for today? A stock well within its move, relatively close to a price resistance, And in a condition where the market is likely to see a rest or a pullback, might be a little stretch. Okay? If I'm going to be trading something in a market like that, I want a really good entry signal, one that gives me a low risk entry. Not a high risk entry with a low potential goal in it. I want a low risk entry with a high potential goal. I have to move with the market. Would you, how many agree? You have to move with the market. We can't move the market. We're not big enough to move the market. We have to move with the market. And if we don't evaluate the market condition, we're gonna have a higher number of losses. That's all there is to it. I made a suggestion in the room today. I've, I've done this several times before. Um, I said, get yourself three post-it notes. Color one, green. Color one, yellow. And color one, red. When you've done your market evaluation, the condition of the market, Stick that post-it note to your trading screen to remind yourself when you try to make that jump the gun decision to rush into a trade, wait a minute, my market evaluation is not so favorable. Should I really be taking this trade? You know, guys, a lot of the difference between being a winning trader and a losing trader is avoiding that next loss. Right? If we can remove one loss, we can have a better winning ratio. So if I have to make that decision, if I have to temper myself, I see a great buy signal and go, man, I want to buy that today. But then go take a look at my evaluation of the market and say, you know what, I need to back off. I need to do less trading today rather than more because of my belief in the condition of the market prevents that losing trade. Imagine that person taking that trade up here. How would they have felt at the close of today? That's like the worst, isn't it? Getting filled almost at the exact high and having to pull all the way back by the end of the day. And all it was was just that recognition that there may be a risk in the market because we have pushed up so far so fast. Okay, so when we're thinking, I wanna go back to this goals real quick so that we can finish this up and not take all night here. When we talk about goals, okay, we need to think about that number that we're trying to achieve. Um, I started out with saying, okay, so you want 12,000 a year. 
a thousand a month, two fifty a week. What's our process to get this? Okay, what are we gonna do? We know to make two fifty, we only need one really good trade. Or could we break this into three smaller trades and make it even easier? Okay, and if all we're looking at for is $250, let me ask you this, guys. Do we need to be chasing everything that's popping up in the news and everything that's running around the market and every little hot tip that you catch on some CNBC show or something like that? No. We need to be focusing on our charts, focusing on our trading. We only need a couple, three good trades. That means we can be extremely picky about the trades we take as well, right? We don't have to just take everything that's popping today. We have to be choosy. Okay? And I'll tell you the one thing that helps more traders that I work with in trading than anything else I help them with is to teach them to take profits. You know, it's remarkable. I say this over and over and it almost sounds silly when you say it. But if you want to be a consistently profitable trader, you have to learn to take profits consistently. See, each and every one of us as a trader has a desire for more. You show me a hundred bucks, I want two. You show me two, I want three. How many of you have ever done this? You got in in the morning, came in in the morning, your stock gapped up. It's worth 350 bucks in the trade. Oh my goodness, I finally hit one. This is great, this is awesome. You go look at a few more things and you come back and look at that stock 15 minutes later and now it's $200. What do you do? Do you take the profit? No, you don't, do you? You said, I, I, this was 350 I want 350 right? Anybody ever take that trade all the way down to a loss before you close the trade? I have. You see, the thing we get caught up in as traders, we see this trade pops and we close that trade and we make some money on the trade. And here's the thing that catches most traders and catches us all, right? We look back the next day and it does this. It goes even higher and we beat ourselves up, right? We made money on our trade, but we beat ourselves up. Oh, I could have had more. No, this money, until you take the profits, guys, until you put that money in your account, this money is not yours. This money was never yours. But isn't it funny, we will let good winning trades fly right past us. Right? We'll let this money just drift around in front of us all the time and we won't stop and pick it up. The friend that I told you about that had a 65% return, his biggest strength as a trader, his number one strength as a trader, guys, is not that he trades a 3-8 trap. It's not that he's some kind of super trader and super evaluator of price action and charts. I told you what it was. He made a 65% return because he didn't pass up $120 profits. He did that over and over and over and over and over again. That's how he did it. His biggest strength as a trader is he has no greed. You show him a little bit of money in a trade, and I swear to you, as good a friend as I am to him, he would run me over to get to his mouse to close that trade.
Uh, Bill, um, I would guess his average is somewhere between 10 and 20% returns. Trading options. He closes those trades. You know what his win-loss ratio is normally? Because he does this, he closes trades. His win ratio is consistently above 75%. Not because he's a great trader, because he takes profits. He doesn't let greed get in the way. Excuse me, guys, for taking a drink. I'm still struggling a little bit here with this. I think the fever's broken, but we're really thirsty. Um, <clears throat> he just does it consistently. He just loves stacking up little tiny bits of money, and over the course of the month, he'll stack three, four, five, six thousand dollars up. Okay. Well, you know, I still, uh, Frank, I think that's, it's true that the commissions play a big part in that nowadays, but I got to tell you, I mean, if you're trading, even if your commission's five bucks, I, I mean, seriously, $5 is going to prevent you from taking a, picking up a hundred dollar bill. Anybody in here want to trade me a $5 bill for a $100 bill? I'll do that all day long. Anybody? Double it. I'll double it. Anybody want to trade me a $10 bill for a $100 bill and do it all day long? Let's double it again. 20 bucks. Anybody want to trade me a $20 bill for a $100 bill? Isn't it amazing how we make excuses for not taking profits? How many in here walking down the street and a $100 bill blows up in front of you in the, on the sidewalk doesn't stop and pick it up? Anybody? Anybody that doesn't stop and pick up, how about a $50 bill? A $50 bill blows across you on the sidewalk. Who doesn't stop and pick it up? In fact, if there were five or six of us walking together, we'd probably all end up with a concussion because we'd all reach for it at the same time, right? But isn't it amazing? We will let hundreds of dollars blow right past us in the market. Now nah, I'm too big, I'm too, I'm not, I'm not trading for a hundred bucks. Give me a break. One of the things, and I'm telling you this honestly, guys, that turns losing traders into winning traders is learning to take profits. Take a profit. It puts a win in the win column, not a loss. I get this question too. Well, how much is, how much is too small? I said, well, answer this question. Is it better to have a $5 win or a $5 loss? I don't want to trade for $5, but I know I'll trade you my negative $5 for your positive $5 every day. Okay. So don't put that stuff in front of you where you can't take a profit. All right, those excuses that we make, that's greed talking and that's preventing us from making money. 
All we have to do, guys, is go back and look at our track record and be honest. Are you making money? Is your account growing? And how many hundreds of dollars have blown past you this week, this month, this year that you failed to just pick up? And how much different your account would be had you just picked them up? I'm going to leave you with that tonight. And I want you to think about that process the importance of having that plan and the focus into your trading. The real world of trading, not the fantasy land that you get in all of these videos and people spewing all of this baloney out there, real trading. Remember this, guys. Only half of the people in the market can ever make any money. The other half have to lose for that to occur. The market is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Half have to lose for the other half to make money. What are you willing to do to make the difference, to give you that edge, that little tiny cut above that allows you to pull money out? Now think about this. Of those people that lose and make money, what do you think the percentage of people that's actually able to do that for a living are? Yeah, tiny. It's a tiny percentage of the market that actually do it consistently. And it's all about the plan. It's all about the process that you follow and the focus that you put into your trading. Take that planned approach. Focus in on what you need to do. Understand your tolerance for risk. Develop the discipline to follow a plan. Get comfortable with taking profits. And you will see your trading account turn around. Okay? I want to wish you guys a great evening. Thank you so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. And honestly, I hope you take something from this tonight and apply it in your trading um, because I know it makes a difference. It can make a difference for you. Go get it. We all have the same opportunity in the market. Go get it. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I'll see Rightway Options folks uh, bright and early tomorrow morning. Remember, guys, um, if you are new here, if you've never been here, I do a morning video. I talked about the importance of, of um, excuse me, got a problem here. Um, I talked about the importance of understanding the condition of the market okay if you guys have um never gone to the right way options channel please go over onto youtube to the right way options channel and subscribe i do it free every day i do that evaluation i try to help people see the condition of the market so they can evaluate and know how to approach the market for the day okay Love to have you over there. There's lots of free information there. Um, so get over there and watch those videos. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Um, I will. I do have a change for tomorrow's schedule, guys. Um, I'll be letting you know about that tomorrow morning. All right. Y'all take care. Have a great, great evening. Thanks, guys, for being here. Wish you all the best.